Welcome to Granny's Book Nook. Today's story is The All I'll Ever Want Christmas Doll Written by Patricia C. McKissick Illustrated by Jerry Pinckney Christmas always came to our house, but Santa Claus only showed up once in a while. Will Santa come this year? My two sisters put me up to ask. Mama tied on her apron. One thing for sure, chickadees. He won't stop by if the house is dirty, she said, stripping the yellowed newspaper off the walls. Mama once explained that she called us chickadees because those little birds huddled together, chattering, twittering, and sharing everything they had, like us. Filled with excitement, we began stuffing the cracks and tacking up fresh paper that would keep out winter winds, making our house ready for Santa Claus. But I sure didn't want to throw away the page from the Pittsburgh Courier with the Baby Betty doll advertisement on it. Each night before falling asleep, I'd imagine us playing together. Baby Betty is all I want, ever, I announced the week before Christmas. Stop, Nella, shouted Eddie Bernice, who never let me forget she was the oldest. We're in a depression. Why are you wishing for something you ain't never gonna get? Yeah, not in a million zillion years, little Dessa added, giggling. I flat out refused to give up my dream. So without my sisters knowing it, I wrote Santa Claus a letter and sent it all the way to the North Pole. Finally, it was Christmas Eve. We all sang Silent Night, and then we girls climbed into bed and snuggled under the new quilt Mama had just finished. Daddy told us the story of a special baby born in a Bethlehem stable long ago. And even though we were too excited to fall asleep right away, the Sandman overcame us one by one. We were awake at dawn. It's Christmas, Eddie Bernice and Dessa shouted. I leaped off the bed, bubbling over with excitement. It's Christmas! Mama and Daddy stirred from behind their sleeping curtain. What little mice girls are disturbing folks for day in the morning? Daddy grumbled, pretend acting angry. Merry Christmas, chickadees, Mama said, giving us each a sack filled with English walnuts, a peppermint candy stick, an orange, and a box of raisins. It was the most Christmas we'd ever had. Daddy held one last package behind his back. Merry Christmas, daughters he said as he presented it to us. There before us was a for real, store-bought, brand new Baby Betty doll, the color of chocolate, with rosy cheeks, black curly locks, and thick eyelashes. She was a million times prettier than I could have imagined. Ooh, cooed Eddie Bernice. Mm-hmm, Dessa giggled. And she's mine, I declared. Dessa grabbed baby Betty's leg. Eddie Bernice elbowed in and snatched the dolls on. No, I'm the oldest, she cried. Mine, Dessa well. Me, I shouted. No. We tugged and yanked and shoved and pulled until Daddy separated us. 
Eddie Bernice Pearson, Laura Nell Pearson, Odessa May Pearson. He said, when Daddy called us by our whole names in birth order, we knew we were in trouble. So we shut up and stood shoulder to shoulder. Gathering us within the circle of his arms, he scolded. Three times shame on you for fighting over a Christmas gift. He looked at us with disappointed eyes. I have chores to do. Work this out and no more squabbling. When the door closed, Mama turned to us and raised an eyebrow. Okay, chickadees, fix it she said. Then she walked away, holding on to my doll. I spoke right up. Who wanted baby Betty the most? You did, Dessa and Eddie Bernice answered grudgingly. And who said it was silly to dream about something I could never have in a million zillion years? We did. And who never gave up and wrote a letter to Santy? You did. So who do you think baby Betty should belong to? Eddie Bernice shrugged. You, I guess. Little Dessa nodded. When Mama heard we were all in agreement, she handed me baby Betty, and the doll's eyelashes fluttered. You are all I want. I don't need anything else, I cried. We'll see, said Mama. After I ate and dressed, I had the whole day to play with my new doll. First, I sang to her, You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy. When skies are gray. Eddie, Bernice, and Dessa watched for a minute. But when I didn't include them, they left. Through the window, I could hear them taking turns, jumping rope with a measure of Mama's clothesline. Having you is more fun than an old jump rope, I whispered to baby Betty. She blinked, and I hugged her tight. I sang every Christmas carol I knew, from joy to the world to jingle bells. Baby Betty was a good listener, but my sisters always sang harmony with me, and Baby Betty couldn't sing a note. Oh well, I said, rocking her gently, let's tell stories instead. I began with Goldilocks followed by Little Red Riding Hood. When I finished, there was only silence. My sisters always clapped, but baby Betty couldn't move her hands. Maybe you'd like Br'er Rabbit and the Tar Baby, I tried, and set in. At last, I got to my favorite part. In my best storytelling voice, I said, Br'er Rabbit say, Ta, baby, you'd better speak like you got some sense or I'll bop you upside your head. But that Ta, baby, didn't say nothing. It just sat there in the road looking dumb. That part always made Dessa giggle, but not baby Betty. I eased to the window to sneak one peek at my sisters. They were making string sculptures. I wish you could do something more than sit around like a spot on a toad, I whispered a little disgusted like. Baby Betty blinked. Having fun? Mama asked, pouring herself a cup of tea. I guess so, I replied. Then suddenly... I got an idea. A party, I shouted. Baby Betty and I will have a tea party same as Miss Florence, the lady you work for. Quickly, I spread a quilt over Mama's trunk 
then placed an imaginary cup and saucer in front of my doll. After serving, I took a sip with my pinky finger raised. This is very, very delicious tea, isn't it, Miss Baby? I said properly. No answer. I tried again. I say, isn't this delicious tea? Baby Betty sat there. Could have been a tall baby herself. You better answer me, girl, I shouted. Nothing. Baby Betty was never going to utter a word. Okay, I said, throwing up my hands. If you don't want to play with me, then I don't want to play with you either. So there. And I stormed away. Through the window, I could hear Dessa and Eddie Bernice chattering, twittering, and sharing. I felt like a lone chickadee. As I stood listening to my sister's hand clap songs, Mama came over and put her arms around me. I think they miss you, she said. Doesn't seem like it. Why don't you ask them to your party? I don't think baby Betty will mind. You don't? Mama just smiled. I didn't have to think about it long. I grabbed the doll and rushed outside. What do you want? We're busy, said Eddie Bernice. I kicked at the ground. Baby Betty wants you to come to our tea party, I said. She does? Dessa asked. I said, my sisters looked at each other. Who would get to pour the pretend tea first? Eddie Bernice asked. You would, I answered reluctantly. And who would get to sit at the head of the tea table? Dessa put in, her arms folded across her chest. You would. I hugged baby Betty. You know she can't do much. I explained, but she sure is pretty. Baby Betty's eyelashes fluttered, and we all giggled. Then I handed Baby Betty over. All the rest of Christmas Day, my sisters and I played with our doll. We sang Christmas carols in harmony and shared stories about once upon a time. Dessa knew just when to laugh and Eddie Bernice knew when to clap. We munched on peppermint candy and orange wedges and ate one raisin at a time so they'd last. But my favorite part was when I poured a pretend cup of tea and with my baby finger crooked ever so daintily, I said real pram and proper like, isn't this the best Christmas ever? Thank you for visiting Grammy's Book Nook. To get more information for this book, check the description box below. Be sure to thumbs up this video. Click the subscribe button for the latest videos at Grammy's Book Nook.